Are you tired of your puppet videos looking dreary and uninteresting? Huh? Do you want to make your puppet videos look more like the pros? Who said that? Then fret no more, friend. You're in luck. Over the next several minutes, we're going to show you some easy and mostly inexpensive ways to improve your lighting, audio, and performance using monitors. Well, I'm, I'm actually sort of in the middle of some- ah! Let's get started! The professionals use all sorts of big, fancy lights. However, all you need are three clip lights from your local hardware store and some compact fluorescent light bulbs. You'll also need something tall to clip them to, like a bookcase, tripods, or Uncle Frank. Set them up according to this simple three-point layout. Two of the lights go out front. Duh. The pros call these the key and fill lights. Where did those come from? They should be set up above and at angles to the subject you're shooting, not straight out in front. Lighting at angles creates shadows and depth and makes your puppet much more interesting on screen, whereas lighting straight on erases all those shadows and causes a flattening effect. Ow, that's really bright. Mm. Now the third light goes above and behind the puppet. Ah, oh. This is called the backlight, and it helps separate your puppet from the background by highlighting the head and hair, which are both looking very dapper today. Um, thank you. You're welcome. <sighs> If you feel the light is too harsh, you can clip some parchment paper to the rim of the light with clothespins. This is called a diffuser. Uh, you want to be careful that the paper isn't touching the bulb because it can be a fire risk. Using compact fluorescents help cut down on that chance, but it's still worth being careful. Any questions so far? Can I go now? Of course not! We're just getting started! <sighs> Where'd they go? There are several ways to improve the sound quality of your puppet video. The best, but most expensive option is to record your audio track separately from the video. Now this requires a microphone and an audio recording device like the one Rob here is using. <laughs> or a program on your computer, such as SoundForge or Audacity. And when the pros record audio separately, they use a device that has starred in many a behind-the-scenes video, the Slate. Oh! The Slate helps the editor line up the audio and video tracks so they are in sync. Ow. If you don't have a slate, not to worry. Just make sure your hands are in the shot and clap them once. Yeah. And when the board on the slate claps, it creates a spike in the audio waveform. Clapping once does the same thing. Use the spike to line up the sync. Recording your audio separately can require a lot of expensive equipment. Now, if you don't happen to have a big pile of cash laying around, check if your camera has a mic in jack. If it does, you can use an inexpensive external microphone to capture much better sound. Ah! Ah! Mm. Unless you have lots of extra hands, you'll want to use something like a mic stand, or a chair, or Uncle Frank to hold the microphone in front of you. You can also use a very small microphone called a lavalier, which you can clip to your shirt, or even better, attach to a ring of elastic and make a headband. Very stylish. Seriously, do I even know you? Now, this way, it doesn't matter which way the puppeteer is facing, the microphone will always be in the best position to pick up sound. Plus, it allows you, as a puppeteer, freedom to move around if you need to. Depending on the cord length. You want your shooting you want your shooting space to be as quiet as, as quiet as you can. Turn off any extra Yeah, much better. Thank you. Turn off any extraneous devices like fans, air conditioners, phones, jackhammers, and crying babies before you begin recording. And no matter what kind of microphone you use, try and keep it as close to the puppeteer as possible. Puppeteer? What puppeteer? That puppeteer. You're breaking the fifth wall! You're breaking the fifth wall! The final way to improve your video is to use a video monitor while you perform. This allows you to see exactly what the camera and ultimately your audience sees. The pros use expensive LCD monitors, but there are low-cost ways to see what you're doing too. Use a small TV, computer monitor, or Uncle Frank to display the video out signal while you perform. You'll need to check your owner's manual to find out how and if your camera supports a video outfeed. Connect the cable from the camera to the monitor, and place the monitor as close to the puppeteer as possible. Make sure everything is connected, and you can see what the camera is filming. Hey, wow! Performing with a monitor can be difficult at first. This is because in the monitor, right and left are reversed. If you move to the right, your image on the screen will move to the left. And if you walk left, your image on the screen will go right. Of course, up and down will stay the same. Ah, stupid vertical hold. 
It takes some practice to move the puppet in the direction you intend, but once you have the skill down, it'll be worth it. Here are some things to keep in mind when working with a monitor. Eye focus. Make sure the puppet is looking where you want it to look. If the character is looking off in a random direction, it's not going to look as lifelike. And one of the goals of puppetry is to convince your audience that your puppet is alive. Keep the puppet upright, not leaning off in some crazy, unintended direction. Again, this spoils the illusion of life. Keep the puppet at a constant height. Don't fall victim to quicksand syndrome. And finally, make sure you, the puppeteer, keep your head and arms out of the shot. So next time you're shooting a video with your puppet, remember lights, audio, and a monitor, and you too can make great puppet videos. Wow, I'm convinced. Thanks, magical voice from nowhere. That was the most instructable thing I've seen all day. I can't wait to get started. <laughs> You're welcome. Burn it, take the countryside, burn it, take the village. <laughs> <laughs>